on the chest is a personal heredity quotient. Everybody's got one, yourself included. It represents the degree of purity of your DNA. In other words, it's your value to society.
You know, I was thinking... I can ask Tabaha to help you with the evacuation. No, Anabish. That's a bad idea. Until I've checked the number of my neurocopy, nobody must know about me. Why is that number so important? Because I'm not sure of my authenticity. We don't know where my neurochip was before making its way to you. If I'm a duplicate, then I'll simply be arrested at the first registration. Well, all right. It's your call. So, let's check your number. Nothing on that front either. I found a list of the amusement park's employees, but for some reason, my name isn't on it. But I'm sure I used to work here. I need more particulars about the park, anything at all. My memories are fragmented and don't tell me anything. But you remembered something, yes? Tell me. Well, I remember that all kids would undergo a transfer after the show. I don't know why. Undergo a what? A mirror transfer. That's what the procedure of transferring consciousness into a mechanical body is called. Meaning, the kids would leave the Gerbera Garden in M-bodies. Strange, isn't it? Doing a transfer at an amusement park. Strange is the word. And another thing. Their age. These kids were really young, around five, six at the most. What's odd about their age? They were way too young for a transfer. Little kids don't get their bodies replaced, but they did here, for whatever reason. And I played some kind of role in it. Only I don't remember what it was. Maybe you'll remember more once your sight is back. Maybe. If Tabaha makes good on his promise, and if there's a functioning look screen in the park. Tell me more about this device. The look screen. Do you mean its purpose? Yes. How does this screen provide sight? A look screen doesn't provide sight. Rather, it displays an image of eyes. I think it's used in a transfer somehow, but I don't recall exactly how. I'll try to remember while you're out. I'm on my way. Which pavilion should I look in? The second. And don't forget... Don't forget what? The box with the phytocopies. Help me understand something. What? Why is it illegal to transfer children? I'm not sure. I think that it has to do with their nervous system, its development. Doing a transfer before it's fully formed is dangerous. Got it. Did you bring what I asked? Help me understand something. What? You said these were five-year-old kids, right? I don't remember their exact age, but they looked no older than five, maybe six. And their new bodies, were they similarly small? No. Nobody even manufactured children's M-bodies. There were only two standard models, adult and teenager. Children were transferred into teenage bodies. When leaving the Gerbera Garden, they looked around 15. Not the coziest garden imaginable. Did you bring what I asked? Help me understand something. What? Whose eyes are on your look screen? Mine. The same eyes I was born with. The same shape and proportions. Everything is stored in the genochip, my entire DNA. Got it.
He wanted to know about the look screen. When you undergo a transfer, you put your palm over the palm of your future body and look into its eyes. It's like looking into a mirror. But this part is crucial. The transfer can't happen without it. Then you're immersed into a kind of peculiar state when you see yourself from the side. On a signal, you push off with your palm and a mirror appears between you. And then you're alone again, in your new body. I see you. Opening.
I told you about the mirror between you and your former body. So, the mirror is turned on at the exact moment when your former body loses its original's right. It is concealed to keep you from seeing your face as it's put to death. The reason is that sometimes there are involuntary, mimicking contractions that resemble a smile. Obviously, that is something best left unseen. If you got a death wish, why would you go there? Where? Oh, nowhere. Did you bring the flowers? Here you go. Atta boy. Here is your lens. My word is my bond. I'm not even going to ask what you want with it. I don't know what's going on in your head today. And I don't want to know. Tabaha? What do you know about this amusement park? Stay away from it, if you know what's good for you. Why do you think it's been fenced off? Because you shouldn't go in there. You'll be better off. You must remember something. Tell me. Think, man. I wasn't even around back then. There was an amusement park. And I guess someone must have exploded in there. Am I supposed to remember every explosion that ever happened? All I know is this damn poison-filled behemoth has been standing there for 20 years now, and nobody ever gave a crap. 
but suddenly you do. Why? I'm curious. It's just so... strange. Sure it is. But why do you care? What are you after? I want to know why kids were undergoing transfers. If they were, then there was a reason for it. Why does that even surprise you? It's just a regular, mere transfer. But to Baja, they don't do transfers to kids. Ordinary kids, they don't. These kids, they might not have been all that ordinary. I saw them once at an airport, with their teachers. I remember those kids standing there all pale and silent. It was forbidden to talk to them. So there. At an airport? Where were they coming from? From all over. They were being brought here from all corners of the world. What's so special about these parts? Damned if I know. There used to be some kind of station here. A polar station. They were researching something. Polar? I think that's what they called it. It didn't interest me in the slightest. To Baja. I've got a request for you. Uh, let me guess. You want me to dig up everything there is to know about the Gabera Garden, am I right? Only what happened on the day of the explosion. Jeez, Anabish. Won't you just forget about this damn garden? Fine, I'll look into it. Thanks, Tabaha. All right, I've got a roll. Last thing I need is to rack up airs and lose my wits. You know how vulnerable I am to that stuff. I may look calm and collected, but I've got crazy energy and passion for life. You look just plain odd. Those glasses and nose. These glasses are one of a kind. You couldn't get them in your wildest dreams. But I got them at half price. That's because I'm a high roller, while you'll be chasing such luxuries all your life. Please, don't forget about my request. Did you bring what I asked? I did. The look screen as well? The look screen and the lens. Let's connect them. Disconnect the broken look screen. The input is inside right behind it. Install the lens first and then my eyes. And then your eyes.
Well? How's your vision? Is it working? Yes. I just... What? Nothing. It's fine. My eyesight is back, thank you. What happened? Did you remember something? Yes, actually, I did. I know now why I wasn't on that list. Why weren't you? I wasn't on staff. I would come to the Gerbera Garden with the kids and go back with the same group. Meaning, I wasn't a full-time employee. I merely accompanied the children. Tabaha said those kids were accompanied by teachers. Those weren't teachers. It was psychologists that accompanied them. I'm a children's psychologist. Why the need for a psychologist at an amusement park? Benabish, this is not an amusement park at all. Those kids didn't come here for entertainment. They were gravely ill and were brought here for treatment. The Gobera Garden was a clinic. What were they treated for? Some kind of psychological disorder. Quite severe, often fatal. But it's hard to say exactly what it was. I can't recall. You mean the transfer was their therapy? One part of it, yes. There was a whole set of measures. Body replacement was the final phase of the therapy. We also searched for parts and staged plays. They too were part of the... treatment. Plays? What kind of plays? I... I remember this one episode. There was a vessel in front of the stage, kind of like a bathtub. It's still there. I saw it. Well, the kids would put M-body parts in it. Each one would bring their own part from the pavilion and put it into the bathtub. And as it filled up, the MC would combine all the parts into a single body. And what happened then? And then, there was a cloud of steam. The body would be quickly, imperceptibly replaced with a young woman's, and she would pick up the lead. She would fight some giant head, and then something else would happen. I can't remember all the details. And the cubes? Were they also part of the treatment? The cubes, the flower beds, even the height of the pavilions. All were deliberate, mandatory elements of the same therapy. The Gerbera Garden was constructed specifically for those children. It was the only means of treating their illness, peculiar though it may have been. The illness must have been peculiar to match. It's still hard for me to imagine what it might have been, but those kids, they evoked more than just compassion. There was something else, some other complicated, ambiguous feeling. Tabaha is right. Those kids were unusual. Yes, and the amusement park was as well. Which means all arrivals had to be registered, myself included. I'll try to look for some kind of visitor's logbook or... Or what? What is it? My battery. It's nearly discharged. Bad news. I need you to make sense of all this. In that case, Anabish, you'll need to play with those cubes some more. Sure thing, Ida. I'll play. Which pavilion? A moment. Hands, wrists. There, the fuel cell. Tenth pavilion. Help me understand something. What? You mentioned original's right. What is that? That's a right to bear identity. When a new M body is activated during a transfer, it is also bestowed original's right, thus acquiring an identity. At that very moment, the former body loses this right and is destroyed. Destroyed? Why? I'm not sure. Perhaps to ensure the two never communicate. Why? What would happen if they communicate? I can't be sure. That's a rare occurrence. I believe the consequences are rather strange. They... I don't know how to explain it. Got it.
illness in those kids wasn't accidental. Before getting sick, there was something special about them, some kind of useful quality. This quality allegedly gave them an intellectual advantage over grown-ups. I see you. Go on in.
I found out what special quality those kids had. They had exceptionally developed visual perception. Visual and aesthetic. 
For them, the shape, color, and the like of surrounding objects was of critical importance. Some things were beautiful in their eyes, others the definition of ugly. And here's the kicker. They were always in consensus. But it was that very ability that ultimately became their plight. The particulars, however, I still do not know. Did you bring the battery? Help me understand something. What? You mentioned originals right. What is that? Destroyed? Why? I'm not sure. Why? What would happen if they communicate? I can't... Got it. Did you bring the battery? Here it is. Let's replace it. Go ahead. But you'll need to switch me off first. All right. Here come the shakes again. Well, no way around that. Yep. Shut me down. See you in a minute. attacks in one day. I'm breaking records. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Well, did you find out anything? Yes. Did you find your number? My number? Oh, no, not yet. But I did learn what the children were treated for. Remember I told you that the shape of objects was important to them? I do. Well, their illness was called morphophobia, fear of a shape, or to be more precise, an aversion to it. What kind of shape? The human body. They couldn't stand the sight of a human body. That was their disease. What do you mean that they couldn't stand it? They would literally get sick, vomiting at the sight of any person. Their teachers, doctors, passers-by, their own parents even seeing each other in the mirror. What did they dislike so much about the human body? We never did find the answer. The children weren't able to articulate their feelings. First of all, they were really young. And secondly, they were unable to communicate at all with anyone. Any attempt at communication caused suffering and psychogenic vomiting. What an unusual disease. Yes, which is why the treatment was likewise unusual. Now I know the purpose behind those strange activities. Playing with cubes, collecting parts, and so on. So why were they assembling an embody on stage? To cultivate in the children a positive association with the sight of a human body. They were using those bits to independently assemble a fairy tale character. A positive character. And thanks to their efforts, a young woman would take the stage. The defender of beauty, protecting a blossoming garden from a wicked witch. The witch symbolized ugliness? Evidently. 
Beauty would triumph over ugliness, and the children rejoiced at their involvement in bringing about a happy end. Bit by bit, their repulsion toward the human body was thus dislodged from their psyches, replaced by a new mindset, which filled the human body with beauty and goodness. But why did they need to go through a transfer? The transfer anchored this mindset. All the emotional experience obtained at the Gerbera Garden would anchor only in a new body. Otherwise, the therapy had no effect. I see. And the cubes? What was their purpose? The cubes have an extremely simple shape. Playing in the pavilions blunted the kids' excessive sensitivity. Their psyches were being simplified so as to start sewing in them trivial categories. Good and evil, beauty and ugliness. Because their perception developed in an anomalous manner, the kids saw the world of shapes very differently, in a way that grown-ups could never understand. And there was no other way to save their lives other than to... make them simpler. I'm still having trouble understanding. Hold on. Meyer. Hennebish. My name is Ida Meyer. You remembered? I found a journal. It contains my data. Here. Ida Meyer, age 26, City of Geneva. My personal number. And a date. August 15th, 2058. What year is it, by the way? 76. Whoa. So, I'm a psychologist from Geneva, and I've been lying in Mongolian soil for 18 years. In a candy box. And not in soil, but in sand. Very well, in sand. And now I'm in a flower vase, trying to verify my number. Only... Damn it. What? It's not working. The network interface. I can't get online. I guess the vase doesn't integrate with the web. Anibish, there's another network terminal underneath the TV. It's functional only without power. If you can power it up, I'll be able to get online. Help me understand something. What? How did the kids react to seeing a mechanical body? The same way as an organic one. They puked. But then how did they interact with the staff? Their bouts of morphophobia were suppressed. The complex was equipped with these emitters. I don't know how they worked, but exposure to them enabled the kids to communicate with the staff as well as among themselves. Got it. The reason is both simple and evident. Simultaneous existence of two copies of the same person gives rise to problems we are not prepared to tackle, as clearly demonstrated by the sorrowful experience of the recent past. For now, strict prohibition on duplication and forced deactivation of existing duplicates remain the only solution to the situation. Deactivated neurocopies are retired into secure storage facilities for likely reactivation in the future when a legitimate solution is found. This is one of the cases when...
data, our terminal burned down. I know, but I managed to check the number in time. You did? So what's the news? Are you going home? The news is bad. I no longer have originals right. There's nowhere for me to go. Why? I was restored. Three years ago, Ida Meyer was confirmed dead and restored from a reserve neurocopy. She currently lives somewhere in Geneva. We don't seem to have much luck. How did she die? It says here, died in a despair toxin emission in 2058. This means you are now a duplicate? Correct. My very existence is illegal. Well, don't fret. We'll improvise. Improvise? Sure. We'll find you a normal body with legs. With legs? And then what? Then? Then we'll live our lives, selling flowers. And a bish. Listen, when my battery runs out, I want you to put my flowers into secure warranty. I mean, into a glass cell, yes? That is a secure evacuation. I understand. What? What I mean is, please put my neurochip in a cell which... Enemish. Into a camera of giants. Or a camera of dreams. What's with your voice? I don't know. A camera of tides? What are you talking about? I'm malfunctioning somehow. My thoughts are out of order. But I think it's over. You need repairs. I don't need anything, Inibish. I'll be put to sleep soon. Disconnected. And for a long while, I bet. So you've decided? Yes. That is my decision. So you wake up and go right back to sleep. Got it. More like, wake up, get totally confused, then go back to sleep. What are you confused about? The explosion, for one thing. I haven't a clue how I'm connected to it. You got caught in an emission. That's just bad luck. No, Enibish, it's not that simple. I found another mention of my name, here, in the database, in the search history. Somebody was searching for information about me. So what? What's so strange about that? The fact that it was the only query for my name in the entire search history, made 20 minutes before the explosion. Who made the query? A man named Mark. Mark Darren. He's listed as transfer operator. The explosion happened on his shift. There's even a recording of it. And also... How curious. What? Going by the recording, there was an equipment breakdown not long before the explosion, at around the same time the query was made. Yes, I want to know what happened there. What kind of a recording is it? A report. It was saved automatically. It mentions some kind of a malfunction that, because it wasn't corrected in time, forced a modification in the transfer procedure. And no, I don't know the nature of the modification. I haven't yet figured it out. Why do you even care? Is that really important now? It is to me, because aside from these fragments of the past, I have more fragments of the past than, I mean... Ida. Hey. It happened again. I'm getting worse. I'll repeat, you need repairs. You need to know the cause of the problem before you can correct it, which I do not. Could it be those processing errors you've mentioned? Which errors? You know, the ones that accumulate over time. Impossible. I've just rebooted myself. They don't accumulate so quickly. Something else is happening here. Your voice is changing. If only it were just the voice. I'm at a loss. The reasons could be many. Could be my synchronizer is on the fritz. I've heard of cases when the neurochip malfunctioned due to a deteriorating link with the DNA. Either that or my neurocopy is failing. But if that's the case... What then? Nothing. Let's just hope it's the synchronizer. Let's. Then we'll replace it with a new one. 
Sure. There's no one here in the small. Distance close. Give me the pavilion number. I'll go and get it. Is in six rooms soft. Got it. And, um, don't go crazy just yet. Try. Try? Yes. Did you bring it? Not yet. Breakdown the report was referring to. During a transfer, the ability to speak was not blocked out for one of the kids. That is, he was talking to himself, to his own copy.
I know why there was so little information about me. August 15th was my first work day at the Gerbera Garden. I had come here for the first time with that group of kids, and the explosion occurred two hours later.
Did you bring it? I did. Hold on while I replace it. Well? It's fine. Thoughts still messed up? No. Everything's fine. Then it helped. For now. We'll see if it lasts. How long will your charge last? About two weeks, maybe less. Say, know what I found? The correspondence of that operator, Mark, with one of his colleagues. There are some strange tidbits here. Here, listen to this. To be honest, it doesn't really interest me. Wait, this is important. It's about your parents. What? Your parents. And me as well. Here, listen. It's a work correspondence. They're talking about research into memory transfer between people using telepathy. Telepathy? That's what it says here. They're discussing telepathy and also mentions some kind of side effect. They refer to it as MPR Zero, the MPR Zero effect. What is it? Well, if my understanding is correct, it's a sensation, a strange sensation experienced when one transmits one's memory. And what of it? Mark writes that at one time he was very interested in the matter, studying MPR Zero thoroughly after that incident with Ida. That incident? We must have been acquainted. Even though I remember nothing about Mark or any unusual effects, and I cannot imagine what incident he's referring to. And what about my parents? That's here, too. He recalls working at a research station before the garden was constructed. There weren't many people around in those days. His circle of contacts was limited to several work colleagues and his Mongolian friends. He writes, It's the family living in a yurt not far from the landing platform. That's your family, isn't it? Sounds like it. Where are your parents now? They died long ago. Why? They could have probably answered many of our questions. Maybe Mark even told them about me. Are you all right? Yes, maybe. Maybe he told them. Ida, is everything fine? Everything fine is an ordinary word. Just a note. Like the weather, chilly or warm, but we were looking for other research. Family records, kind letters, so... What was that just now? More of the same? Yes. Again. Ennebish. What? I don't think I have much time. Please, help me untangle this web with Mark. I want you to look through your parents' things. They may have left behind notes, journals. Understood. I will go look for them. Tabaha is here. Did you find anything? Not yet. Still looking. Hurry. I'll be disconnected soon. You'll get you back online. No, you won't. Waking from a coma is impossible. But you can try and shock me with electricity. Why? Will that bring you back to life? It won't, but it might switch me on. If we're lucky, it would give us a few minutes to talk. A few minutes? And then what? And then I will cease to be.
looks like it'll rain. Rain? Today? There'll be rain and thunder, and it'll sweep all profiteers into a ditch. What happened? You got any idea how much the search cost me? No. How much? One and a half. Is that a lot? Well, when and by and who gore has the internet ever cost one and a half? I'll pay you back. I won't take money from your destitute self. All right. Thanks. The information was paid for and delivered by a personal courier. Very nice. So, what did you find out? Well, first of all, the Gabetta Garden was never about entertainment. It was a hospital, I know. But what happened to it? The kids were all patients, yeah? Well... One of them had his container overflow. The passim exploded. That's what happened. That's all? Hold your horses. The story ain't so simple. Think. A person gets his body replaced and blows up minutes later. You might ask, how could they not have checked the container? Turns out they did check. And the container was empty. And yet, 15 minutes later, it up and explodes. In other words, the capsule filled and overflowed rapidly. Pretty much instantly, in point of fact. There must have been a reason. Must have been, sure. But it wasn't found. All that's known is that there was a mishap with this particular child's transfer. Turns out, he had been talking to himself while in the booth. That was the mishap. As to why he blew up, that part's unclear. When he came outside, all his stats were normal. And he looked calm. You can see it on the video. He was talking to himself? What about, I wonder? Nobody knows. The conversation wasn't saved. What's the video you mentioned? From the security cameras. You can see everything. Here he is, coming out of the booth in an M-body. Here's the sword acceptance ceremony. Here he is, getting off the stage and heading into the garden. He's walking evenly, takes a seat on the edge of a flower bed, then this part is a bit unclear. What's happening? A child comes up to him as he's sitting, a teeny little thing, walks up and says something to him. Looks like the kid fancies the sword and is asking for it. What sword? A toy, just a shiny toy sword. They were given to the kids as presents after their body replacements. Endure a transfer, get a toy. Okay. Okay. So our hero hands over the sword. He's holding on to the hilt, hand extended. The child is trying to take the sword, but can't. Why can't he? Because he's grabbing at the blade, which is holographic. The kiddo's fingers swish right through the air, through the illusion. I see. And then what happens? Then, nothing happens. It's the end of the recording. The explosion is coming up. Here's a grown-up approaching the kids. That's the transfer operator. He walks up to his patient and asks him something. The latter turns around and blows up a second later. And that's it. Doesn't clear up much, I'm afraid. What was his name? Mark. Or who are you asking about? The one who blew up? That was Albert. And the other child? The little one? Don't know. He was one of the locals. Not sure how he ended up inside the garden. Uh... Have fun with your little mystery now, but I'm off. See you tomorrow? I don't know. It might be three, four days, maybe a week. We'll see. All right, take care now. Don't get caught in the rain. Hold on to Baja. I've got one more question. I told you everything I know about this garden. I got nothing else. It's not about the garden. It's about my parents. I wanted to remember something about my parents. Here. What's this? A key to the drawer of your Grandpa Botchin's bedside table. Where did you get it? Botchin left it to me. He said that if ever you ask me about your parents, to give you this key. So, that's what I'm doing. 
and I don't know nothing else. Goodbye. Goodbye, Tabaha. Did you find anything? Not yet. Still looking. Hurry. I'll be disconnected soon. Hang on.
found it. You and Mark had met once before. Yes, I already know. I remembered it. How? Tell me. It was just after my college entrance exams. My friends and I were hanging out in the city as part of a larger group. Mark was there as well. I hadn't met him before then, nor seen him since. Our paths crossed once, and that was that. So, what happened between you two? Nothing at all. We didn't have a single exchange. We all just sat there with the guys on the cafe terrace chatting about this and that. It was your typical evening. Mark was recalling some kind of special moment. Nothing so special that it stayed with me. Except, maybe, there was this strange sensation. A sensation? Yes. Sometimes I get a peculiar feeling. It somehow resembles anxiety, but only partially. I can't really describe it. It is a sad, pleasant feeling. I had felt it again that particular evening, and... And what? Anabish. I'm about to shut down. Wait. We're not done figuring out your past. And we won't. I am out of time. I received a message. From whom? From my neurochip. Only, the neurochip writes in red letters. I'm being informed that it is self-destructing. Know what I can do? What? Split myself in two. What do you mean? When I shut down, my upper half will split from my legs. Why? I've no clue. That's just how my body works. I can show you. Watch. Wait, don't. Ida, listen. I'm listening. Maybe there's still a way to fix everything. Fix everything? Well, there is a way. If you can travel to the past and pass four digits to Professor Koch, that would fix everything. Fix. Everything.
there. Ida. I'm here. How do you feel? Strange. Strange? In what way? Describe your state. I feel anxious. That's good. Good? Yes. Just don't shut down. Look at me. Why? I'll explain everything later. <laughs>